Thank you, Michael. Good morning, everyone. How is everybody? Yay. Thank you all for coming today. It's our joy to share today with you. We're going to begin by reading from Whispers from Eternity. This is Yogananda's book of prayer demands and poems. And this is number, dun, 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 drum roll, number 33. <laughs> I had to double check. <laughs> okay, let's take a moment and just check our posture again. If you can, back away from the back of the chair. Gently roll the shoulders back. Feel the heart opening, expanding, feeling for God's presence. Allow the mind to relax. Let all plans go. You've made it this far. You're here today. Enjoy this time while you're here. Let all plans go. And take these words as your own words in prayer from your heart. Our one Father, we are traveling by many true paths toward thy one abode of light. Show us the one highway of common realization where all bypaths of theological beliefs meet. Make us feel that the diverse religions are branches of thy one tree of truth. Bless us that we enjoy the intuition-tested, ripe, luscious fruits of self-knowledge hanging from the many branches of true scriptural teachings. In thy one temple of silence, we all sing to thee a chorus of many-voiced religions. Teach us to chant in harmony with thy love's manifold expressions that our choir of souls rouse thee to break thy vow of cosmic silence and lift us into thy lap of universal, immortal understanding. Om, peace, amen. Such a beautiful prayer. It's hard to believe that there's any discord, you know, or any hard feelings around this issue of pathways to God. This topic reminded me of the story of the man who had five blind sons. And he asked them to clean an elephant, and then he wanted them to share their experience. Well, the first son washed the, um, the legs, and he said, oh, this elephant has, has uh, what do they call again? the pillars. pillars, thank you, that's the word, um, the four pillars. And he said, that's what it is. The second one said in, in an argumentative voice, no, 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 you're wrong. The elephant is like a string from heaven. He had been washing what? The tail. And then the third one said, no, 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 it's like a giant rope. He had been washing the trunk. And then the fourth one said, in, in an argumentative voice again, this one said, you're not speaking the truth. This elephant is like a breathing wall. He had been washing the sides of the elephant. And finally, the fifth one said, oh, you're all crazy. Sounds like from an Italian family. You're all crazy. <laughs> <laughs> or at least from my family. <laughs> They're all crazy. No, no, no. The elephant is like this fan. He had been washing the ears of the elephant. So we can see how we can get ourselves into a little bit of trouble here. We don't always have the whole picture. And everything on the outside, the temples, the beautiful altars, all the ceremonies we do are to remind us of God. That's our one true goal, is to find God. But what happens, we get caught in these outer things, don't we? And we forget to dive deep. We forget to look underneath at that underlying oneness. Everybody's saying the same thing. I was remembering when I first moved to California from New York City. I was raised Catholic. I've shared this before in service. Went to parochial school through grammar school, high school. And then I finally get to California where... It's just everything goes, especially where I landed in this wonderful congregation. I went to a community congregational church near San Francisco. And every Sunday we had a different theme. One Sunday was honor your pet day. And literally people brought their pets. The only rule is that you had to have them on a leash. And somebody even brought a goat in. And, you know, it was really, it was so fun. And then the next week we honored, we had some ministers from Africa visiting. And they got to share their message. And then we literally all got in the aisles and we started dancing. You know, it was just every week it was a different honoring of a different path. And I remember saying to our pastor at the time, I said, oh, it's so much fun. We're just learning about all these different religions. And he's like, well, no, what do you think we're really doing here? We're, we're underneath, he said, we're really um, uniting, we're exploring, we're seeing the oneness of all of diversity here. It's not about the pets, it's not about the dancing, but what's, uh, what's underneath all of that on the surface? It's not so much what's out there, but what's coming out from inside. 
A Sunday school teacher was explaining to her five and six-year-olds the commandment, you know, to honor thy father and thy mother. And she said, well, what's, a com what's the commandment regarding how to treat your brothers and sisters? And without missing a beat, a little boy said, thou shalt not kill. <laughs> um. <laughs> Frank Laubach was a Christian missionary. Many of you know him. He's written some beautiful books, but he started many schools in the Philippines. And when he first arrived, he could see that the Muslims, they were very happy with the religion that they were following. And he realized, you know, my ministry here is going to be different than what I thought. I thought I was going to be sharing with words. But he said, I realize it's going to be by my example. And he was out on a boat, and there was another boat coming nearby, and they were doing rituals. And the Islam, the priest there, he yelled over to Frank. He said, are you Islam? And Frank said, no, but he said, I am a friend of Islam. And then the priest there said, will you pray with me? And Frank said, yes, of course I'll pray with you. This is what we're talking about, is joining together, you know, on the surface. Not, as our reading so beautifully said, not making judgments, not defining lines, not, again, creating those boxes that we're so good at creating. Um, if you've read the Autobiography of a Yogi by Paramahansa Yogananda, it's a wonderful journey, especially in the beginning. Yogananda tells us all about his family, but then he goes on a spiritual journey, and he meets all these different saints, doesn't he? If you've read the book, right in the beginning, he meets um, saints that appear and disappear. He meets a saint that can produce perfume. He meets saints that are good with animals. He meets God-realized masters. And then he finally finds his guru, because he was on a spiritual quest. He finds his guru, Sri Yukteswar, and then he goes to his ashram. But Sri Yukteswar wanted him to grow spiritually, so he was hard on him. He said, you have to go back home. You have to get your education. And it was not what Yogananda wanted. After a while, then, he still had the desire to go out and see more saints. Does it sound familiar? We still have the desire. We find the jewel, but we still go out into the world. And he wanted to see the sleepless saint, Ram Gopal. And so there he is, you know, he's on a goose chase. You know, I don't know if it was probably divinely, you know, created. He can't find him. He actually just passes him in the street, and Yogananda goes into a temple, and he doesn't pay his respects, because he was on this mission. He was going to look for Ram Gopal. And then he passes a man on the street, and it turns out to be Ram Gopal. And he gives, he gives Yogananda a hard time. He goes, you did not show your respects in the, in the temple there. What are you looking for? You found your cave. Why do you, why do you think you need to go to the Himalaya, Himalayas? Sri Yukteswar is your cave. You found him. Again, how familiar that is for us, right? How often we go out into the world looking for the things. We find this jewel. I was remembering again when I first moved to San Francisco. I, I wanted to, you know, I was raised Catholic, but I never had a deeper experience of God. And so I finally found Ananda. We had a center at the time, and what a gift that is. There are only so many centers in the world. And so here we found, I found the center in San Francisco. I had an experience in meditation where I could actually feel my heart beginning to open. Being raised in New York City at the time, you had to be very protective, you know? You never tried to open your heart. But I was learning how to open my heart. I was learning how to still my mind. Granted, it was only two minutes, but it was something. Right? I found something. But I said, nope, you know, I'm fresh out of college. I'm new to the Bay Area. I've got to get my career going. And once I get my career, the real estate market's good. I've got to buy a house. So I literally put that all on hold. Flat, you know, fast forward. Many of you in Raja Yoga know this story because I've shared it. Flat, you know, fast forward, you know, several years. And I have my, job, my dream job. I'm working for a large advertising agency in downtown San Francisco, starting to check the, the newspapers to buy a condominium or whatever. You know, I'm doing really well. Many of you remember it's coming up on the anniversary. I see someone from the Bay Area um, in October 1989 was, um, was an earthquake. And I was still at work, and I worked in downtown San Francisco in what they call the Embarcadero Center, number five, which is the one closest to the water. But they built those buildings, there's five of them, with earthquakes in mind. So what will happen in real layman's term, when the ground will shake, you'll rock and roll really in them. But it's good because it's releasing the tension. I didn't know that. I'm a good girl from New York City, solid ground. Well, the earth, you know, I'm there in my office, ninth floor, and the ground starts shaking. And I don't know how, to, how I knew this, because I didn't have any emergency preparedness, but I get under my desk on all fours, and I start screaming, oh my God, 
oh my God. But then I realized I didn't know who my God was. And then I really started screaming, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, then I realized, you know, sometimes we need the ground to shake underneath us to remind us. Swami Kriyananda, in his book, The New Path, he goes through a beautiful journey. He tells us the things of the world he realized Those were not what he really wanted. That's not what was going to bring him true joy. And then he found the autobiography of a yogi and then takes the bus and he finds his guru the next day. But for us too, somebody very um, sincerely asked Yogananda once, will I ever leave the path? And Yogananda said, you'll never leave the path. We're always on the spiritual path. And that desire for God, that will always win. That will always have us coming back. But we need to make the effort. We need to remember to take the time and not say, oh, my job is more important. Me, at that point then, I went to classes. I learned how to meditate at that point. Because I realized even the ground, you can't count on anything. Nothing stays. And then when you go deep, you know, the practices of meditation are so important because it's not about the outer. It's not about the rituals and what the altar looks like and how and all of that. It's about what are we finding inside. And when we do that on a regular basis, we find the deep joy, okay? Not the joy from the surface from buying a new house or a car or whatever. Those are great joys. I enjoy them too. They're fun, but they never last. Nothing lasts. Like that earthquake, the ground will move. But where are we going to find that inner joy, love, peace, power, sound, all those qualities of spirit? And when we take time, in meditation. That's why we always say meditation, meditation, always. Underneath then, we see that underlying oneness. And even if we have the same guru, we're not going to look the same, right? We're going to look different. We're all different. Look at us. But underneath, somebody said, I can always tell when somebody's from Ananda, and Swami kind of cringed. Ooh, what are they going to (laughs) say? I see this joy, I see a joy. And it's not an ananda means joy, but it's a universal joy. It's a joy that any path, any religion has. You find underneath the surface, everybody's saying the same thing. And it's such a beautiful reminder today to not judge, to not put ourselves in a box. My path is better than your path or whatever. None of that. But what? To remember to go deeper. We just had a Kriya initiation last night. Most beautiful sacred ceremonies. What? To go deeper in spirit, to discover who we are. Lahiri Mahashaya, we're going to be celebrating Wednesday night, his birthday, the time when he was born, and the time when he left his body. Times when a saint comes into this world and leaves, they're sacred times. Call to Lahiri. Read the chapter about Lahiri. He He brought Kriya Yoga to us. Read about Lahiri. Read about these saints. It's so, the, the line, you know, last night at the ceremony, you could feel the presence of the masters so deeply. They're always with us. They're always with us. And the reminder is to go inside, go underneath the surface, discover that underlying oneness that we all have with each other. Have fun with it. Come, pray, love, serve, remember, love God. Blessings. And now we'll have some music. <laughs>